All right, welcome back to Fallout 4. It's been over a week since I've had a chance to play any games at all. And I don't know about you guys, but after a few days of not playing any games, I start playing them in my head while I'm, you know, supposed to be working or whatever else that I'm doing. And then after about a week of not playing any games at all, I start getting straight up grumpy and I know it's time. It's time that I've got to find a way to sit down and have a nice game session. So I'm very thankful to have a little bit of time to do just that right now. And I think I want to jump straight into it. And the last time that I played, I got a couple perks, one of which allows me to uh, mod some melee stuff. So I want to see about that. But first, I think I'm going to take a little while to nerd out on some inventory management. Then I'll check back with you when I've got that sorted. All right, let me give you a quick tour of my workshop storage here. So this is my miscellaneous cabinet, just things that I don't think I'll need, but I'm not sure about. Uh, over here, I have uh, my weapons that I'm interested in potentially using later. Uh, armor over here that I care about, uh, which is nothing right now. Then I have just extra weapons that I'll probably either scrap or sell. And then same with armor over here. I've got my power armor items in this cabinet. And uh, let's let's check out some melee mods. Let's see what I can do to my baseball bat. We'll check the baton first. Electrified or stun pack. So both of those require science, which is of no use to me right now. With the baseball bat, natural, okay, I can change the color, which doesn't seem, well, so aluminum actually does more damage and weighs less, so that just seems better in every way. And then here we can go barbed, spiked, sharp and chain wrapped and the materials required for these are pretty low it seems so of the things that I can upgrade to right now sharp which bleeds targets but isn't quite as good a damage you know I think I'm interested in seeing what bleed does I have no idea if bleed is good in this game, so I think rather than the extra damage, I would like to experiment with the, the razor blade. I kind of like the aesthetics of the razor blades around the baseball bat, too. There we go. And then let's see if I can now make it aluminum for extra damage. Absolutely, I can. So, yeah. Why not? Now we have a sharp aluminum baseball bat very nice and then as far as guns I'm not sure I want to spend any materials on guns but let's look at this pipe auto pistol I'm gonna keep the automatic receiver on it but for pretty minimum amount of materials I can significantly increase the range so I'm gonna do that and then I think I'll leave the rest of it stock. But this can be my backup weapon for now. As well as this double barrel shotgun. But again, I think I'm going to save my materials and just see how I fare for the moment. Let's check this bat out. Oh yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. A couple quick notes. Uh, one that you may have noticed. I switched the color of the HUD to yellow. It's a little closer to the color of the HUD in Fallout New Vegas, which I love. I'm a huge fan of. And uh, I'm, I'm liking it so far, but I may tweak it a little more as I go. I also downloaded a sound mod that supposedly changes a lot of the uh, more quirky and annoying sounds in the game to make them a little more somber or subtle. And so I'm going to be just testing that out to see if I like it or not for a while. 
Okay, now we need to get a plan together. So I have been thinking while I've had some downtime and I think I'm going to commit to my earlier plan of just kind of foregoing the uh, main missions completely. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to think about the missions. I think that I just want to have a true post-apocalyptic adventure. Uh, and so to do that, I'm kind of thinking what I want to do is start picking points on the map. Um, potentially maybe all the way on the other coast and just making excursions from here all the way through just kind of like scouting missions and getting what I can along the way but when I run into something that's you know too too much for me or uh, when I run into a building I can't get into then I'll make notes and uh, we'll figure out you know how to overcome those things later but I'm, that's what I'm thinking right now, just really embracing the lone wanderer kind of uh, attitude and uh, not taking on any quests of like, hey, you know, we need a hero to go help over here. Uh, I'm just going to completely ignore the Minutemen and really anyone asking me to do anything. I'm going to kind of role play Kai here as someone who has came out of the vault. He's paranoid. He's doesn't trust anyone and so uh you know we're just gonna fend for ourselves for a while uh but before i get crazy and try to get all the way over here because i'm not positive but i would think that the enemies and things scale the farther you get away from kind of the starting area uh i am gonna do one circle here i'm gonna kind of use it's actually gridded out, I just noticed this. So I don't know if this is from the map mod I'm using or if there was a version of this in the vanilla game. I don't remember, but here's area one, here's area two. So it looks like there is a road right here, a main highway that kind of separates area one from everything else. Let's do a big circle around this just to hopefully get a couple more levels and maybe uh, a few more pieces of gear and um, maybe do some hunting get some food because when I set out to try to get you know say all the way to the coast over here or maybe down here I'm not sure uh, it's probably gonna be a pretty long adventure and I would like to be adequately prepared at least a little more than I am now so yeah let's do a quick circle through here and then figure out where exactly we want to go for our first uh, true excursion. Okay, well my first stop is just back in Concord where I just took on the Death Claw last time. Uh, first off, I realized I did not loot the raiders that died during that battle, so I've done that. And then I've stumbled onto this scene here in the Concord speakeasy. And I think it's worth appreciating it looks like this guy uh, was having a real good time and at some point had a, a real human lover that he in a what looks to be a booze and drug fueled rage uh, decapitated and then set up in this horrific little scene with these mannequins I'm assuming this is her head here. I'll take that. Well, I can take these machetes as well. Yeah, this is disturbing. And uh, I found the murder weapon, it seems, under the bed. In a pool of blood. And then he replaced his decapitated lover the mannequin so messed up things going on at the end of the world in this room I think I'll get out of here now now I'm getting out of here 
And I just realized I neglected to check my clothing options earlier, but I think this will do nicely. I'm feeling like a proper wastelander now. So I've got a house or a barn, something this way, got another symbol that way, and then there was kind of a, a dig side or something that way. So I'm just going to use Concord as kind of my central location and start exploring the things around here, I think. We'll go this way first. What do we have here? Feral ghoul. Okay. What is that? Feral exploder. I don't know how afraid I need to be of these things. But the answer is probably very afraid. Once again, not sure if some of these ghouls are going to be in the normal game because I do have a mod and my mods are always going to be in the descriptions list from now on. But I do have a, a ghoul mod pack that changes up some of the ghouls. Gorski cabin. Oh man. Oh man. We've got at least three, maybe four. Either I'm going crazy or that big boy just disappeared. Okay, uh, he decided to take a nap, it looks like. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, that dude's being a little glitchy. Uh, I don't like him at all. We got one back here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you... Alright. Uh, it's game time. Let's try this new pistol out. Maybe I can cripple some legs. This is not good. I need to find high ground. I need to get out of here. I do not want to die to hideously ugly ghouls right now, but it looks like there's a good chance that I might do exactly that. Okay, let's see if we can figure out. I don't. I don't want you to explode on me, but I would love you to explode on everything else. If I get up here, I wonder if they can... Yes. This is bad. This is so bad. That was nice, so do they just explode when they die? Or is there a weak spot? What is what is the secret here? Let's go back towards the house. Okay, he did not explode. Huh. I kinda wanna test this theory. Let's see if... Okay. Okay. I think it's... I think it's the gut. I think it's the gut. Alright, I'm learning here. What is going on with you? What is happening? Is there something stuck to the back of its head? Or is it just glitching? Is this a, uh, I don't think it's, is this a Bethesda stretchy glitch? Are you even active? 
Oh yes, okay. Let's not... Let's not play. Oh no, 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 you're really tough. You're really tough. I'm gonna try to cripple a leg, I think. Uh, I gotta run, I gotta run. Those sounds are terrifying. Interesting. I think I'm clear. But before I go inside, I'll have a snack. inside the house but we do have a cellar door here I need to check out bag of cement probably not worth picking up but uh, man I do love looting the junk in this game I mean I'm not gonna lie, I'm just perfectly satisfied roaming around, breaking into dead people's houses, or uh, ghoul infected people, and just taking all their junk. It's a good time. Okay, I noticed this a second ago. But now, I've confirmed it. I've never noticed that the brackets around the uh, hidden meter change. I'm assuming when something is close by, or maybe when something can hear you, but can't see you. I don't know. But there's definitely some mechanic with that, and I don't think I ever noticed that in my entire playthrough the first time. So there's something here, for sure, and I need to start paying closer attention to that. Wayne Gorski, oh no. Oh no. I found the owner. And he is angry. Critical. <laughs> uh, that was a... Super-powered phantom swing there. Stretched all the way across the room somehow. But I'm not going to complain about it. Brother, you are hideously ugly. It's like a... It's like a mole rat human hybrid. It's terrible. You got any friends down here, Mr. Wayne Gorski? It appears not, but I'm taking rad, so I've got to... I got to get out of here quickly. Let's see... 
Lots of nuke parts. Just take everything. Just take everything and go. Bottle cap mine. Oh, that's great. Diamond City is now permanently marked on your map. Okay then. Let's see what we have here. Well, it seems Mr. Gorski here was a bit of a conspiracy theorist. He thought that the government was rolling out some kind of mind control project with the electrical towers, like the one outside of his house. And he was scheming to blow it up. So, was he crazy or did he have a bit of the truth? Probably a little bit of both as it goes with governmental conspiracy theories and shadowy plots. Okay, after looking at my available perks, I think I'm going to take the chance to say that my little run-in with Mr. Gorski there uh, and all of the nonsense that he was tinkering on in that radiated room somehow locked a new ability in me. The ability to attack enemies across a room in melee. So, now it's justified. Doesn't break the immersion when I suddenly teleport 20 feet away to smack somebody in the face with my baseball bat. We can thank Mr. Gorski for that. Sorry, pal. I needed your meat to cook. Okay, this is the little place that I could see from the side of Red Rocket. Pretty sure there were friendlies here, so I uh, might could steal their plants, but I don't know if they would be of any use to me. Abernathy Farm. Three caps per melon. Not a bad deal. If... Deal. But let's keep it between the two of us. The last thing I want is another lecture from my mom. Here to collect the caps for the melons you gathered? Great. Thanks for your help. Well, that was easy enough. I uh, said I wasn't going to help anybody, but I also like money. And so those things are in a bit of a conflict. I know it's video game logic to just take everything you can if you're not going to get caught, but I can't help but maintain some level of role play here. It just doesn't seem like it's in my best interest for self-survival to uh, just raid friendly people's homes, so I'm not going to do it. And I spent a little too much time probably at uh, Mr. Gorski's shack, but since that was kind of my first intense encounter, that's all right. I do think I'm going to pick it up now though. I'm going to do a quick sweep uh, around the rest of this area because I really don't want to spend too much time here in the zone. I want to make my preparations and head out east, I think. I love picking the right one on the first try.
my god. That was so close. <laughs> I almost screwed up royally there, but it's so satisfying to use objects in your surroundings to take out enemies in interesting ways. I love doing that. It makes me think of like the first time I played Half-Life, or maybe I played Half-Life 2 first. I can't remember, but that was the first game I ever remember allowing you to, uh, you know, really get creative with how you took enemies out using the physics based engine. It's really amazing how much differently I feel once it gets nighttime. My level of paranoia goes up exponentially, but at the same time, it's like, I'm glad you weren't hostile because I would have been absolute toast right there. Yeah, it's exactly the experience I'm looking for when I start getting a little nervous. That's what I like. Found a trader out here in the wilds and bought a couple of uh, random junk items from her that I think are worth the materials, the value. And now I think we're going to head back over towards Concord and go down to the south. Permanently take 5% less damage from melee attacks, okay? I'm very useful, especially as I'm going to be up close and personal with a lot of things. So my uh, good-natured role-playing does not extend to rad stag does because I want meat. You can live though. Alright, I've free the robots. I'm hearing ghoul sounds, I think. I'm seeing ghouls. Can you open a door? You sure can. Professor Goodfields. <laughs> Again. We're gonna thank Mr. Gorski for this newfound ability. I need to respect him. I need to respect him. Let's see if I can play with this blitz. If I can get some space. Get some space. Can I teleport through a table? I think once we build out to a full on melee berserker maybe put a point into the perk that allows me to uh, take less damage as i'm sprinting and then armor up a little bit i'm actually feeling all right about heading out into the more difficult parts i think this instead of run and gun it's just gonna be run and smash okay I guess I'm sending Professor Goodfellow here to Hester's Consumer Robotics. 
So long, little buddy. Keep up your chill attitude and maybe I'll see you later. Okay, a feral brute does not look or sound like something that I want to mess with at less than half health. So let's heal up. And um, maybe start things off with a little explosion. That wasn't it. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's this is not going to be fun. It might be fun, but I think it's going to hurt. Let's try this in and out. strategy here. Okay, so let me find my uh, my vats distance here. Okay, you're very slow, but I assume if you hit me, you're gonna really hurt. I was correct, that really hurt. Was that the first time I've died? I can't even remember. I think it was though. I've got that little mechanic that I implemented about the fast travels that I need to keep track of. But for now, what is the smart play here? Let's see. Let's try this again and Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and swap out to this, maybe attempt to weaken him a little bit. I need to find high ground. This is when uh, setting up a mine would be good have done that before I engaged. Alright, got a little separation. Got a couple hills off. Trying not to, uh... Oh my god. No. That's number two. Okay, I have found my first arch enemy here, so... First thing, I forgot last time to heal up before I engaged with him. Let's do that. Uh, next, I'm going to put, I think, one of my mines down. Yeah, right here. Let's do that. Right outside the door if we can get there. Number three. I'm gonna do that again, except better. I'm gonna use a bottle cap mine this time. That was nice. Okay, huge dagger. Uh-oh, we got company, though. I think he's just down permanently. Oh, no. Bottle cat mine for the win. Oh, that was excellent. Okay. Yeah, definitely got to get me some more of those or get to the point where I can create some. That's going to be my boss killer. Bottle caps, ammo, right away, jet, medics, and the light and boiled 
leather chest piece. Permanently collect extra meat from animal kills. Even more reason to murder rad stacks. Alright, I found a national ration stockpile in the bottom of a small church called the Lonely Chapel and there's a little more to it than I thought there was going to be. Really in danger of getting gunned down by a turret, which I would really prefer to not happen. Oh no, and I, I got company now. One raider down. Okay, I gotta make sure that I don't. Oh, no, no, that's a named NPC. Oh, and that's death number four, I believe. Okay, take two. What's my play here? Alright, there's the named NPC right up there. So I can either try to take her out first and do it quickly. I don't know if I have enough DPS for that. somewhere that I could use to put the turret on my side there? okay now there's that guy he went that way are there two turrets uh -huh. who's out there Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, I'm in a bad, bad spot. It looks like I'm going to have a long-winded shootout. That's my only option from where I am currently. That's one step in the right direction. Time to reel them in. Don't quit, do you? Uh oh. Let's just impact it. One more hit. Okay, just don't get killed by this guy. Oh, I leveled up. Perfect timing. Oh, that was wonderful. Don't get... There's another turret, I think. Yes. Um, okay, before I do anything... Oh, let's, let's loot. Before I do anything, let's loot. That's, there's nothing more important than that. That's a light shadowed leather right leg. Not sure what that does, but it's gotta be good, right? Sounds cool. All right. Well, that was fun. Good stuff from the turret, makeshift battery, lots of good loot here. Permanently more difficult to detect while sneaking. Yes, thank you very much. So I picked up this note here where somebody is angry about some lousy deviled eggs. 
And it made me think of Jesco White and the White family from the Appalachians. And that's probably going to be a pretty obscure reference, but if you've never heard of Jesco White, I recommend a quick YouTube search. Well, it looks like Red here was searching for her sister Lily, but I solved her case by um, making her incapable of doing that, I think. So, my work here is done. Um, Nuka World Transit Center. This is off the map. Is this a DLC? Alright, so it's possible I found one of the DLCs, which is one of the things that I wanted to look out for. So, I'm going to note that, but I don't think I'm going to mess with it at the moment. And similarly, I don't think I'm going to mess with whatever this is. Looks like some kind of a raider hideout, but I am going to steal this fusion core and then GTFO. Uh oh, federal ration stockpile. Okay, that's probably worth a trip back to later. Wow. I guess that's one way to keep the rain off of you. That's the best thing I've seen in this game so far. You. So what's your story? Looking to trade? Rob me? Or just ask directions to Diamond City. And then lights up a cigarette in the rain. She is a certified badass. And she has two katanas. I wish I could dual wield. But I'm definitely getting one of those. And after a little bit of trading, I'm going to pick up the katana, a few bobby pins, a desk fan and a fishing rod for the materials and wipe her out of the money that she has thanks to uh, selling my minigun rounds which I don't think I'll be using so overall pretty good stop here at this lady who uh, honestly intimidates me quite a lot seeing as how she can just shoulder press a brahmin above her head with no effort whatsoever. Oh, you do actually hold the katana in one hand. That's very cool. Okay, I'm pretty happy about this. What do we have here? Starlight Drive-In. Uh-oh. Lots of mole rats. I'm really digging the katana animations over the uh, the baseball bat. That's unfortunate. Okay, I don't know how many deaths I have, but I'm pretty sure. What What is happening? Oh, that's ghouls. I thought that was just people chasing a Brahmin. Hey, if anybody's gonna kill this Brahmin, it's gonna be me. Alright, back to the task at hand here. I'm not dying to... 
traps. Oh man, I'm gonna be so paranoid now. If I'm not mistaken, there's a perk that eventually makes it to where I think bombs and traps don't even go off when you run over them. I'm not sure that I would even want to take that because the threat of getting blown up by a, uh, a bomb trap at any given moment is actually something that I think I'd rather keep in play. I found a magical window. I very much enjoy that for some reason. What a shot. Workshop shed key. Alright, I have another potential settlement. And a pretty interesting one, honestly. Lots of room for building here. But, I don't know, I'm kind of partial to Red Rocket. This is not really far enough away to relocate, I don't think, but what I could potentially do is scrap a bunch of these cars if I needed more material to build back at Red Rocket, but I think I'll complete my loop and head back towards Red Rocket now. It feels good to be safe back at home. I think I'll keep this outro short and sweet since this game session has been a little bit longer than I normally get. I just want to check out what upgrades that I can get and uh, offload my extra inventory and get ready for the next adventure. So let's start with leveling up. Okay, the perks that interest me most right now are big leagues for more melee weapon damage, action boy for quicker regeneration of action points, Moving target, because I like that in and out kind of style of combat a lot right now. Or ninja, because four times damage on sneak attacks with melee weapons sounds extremely powerful. So I need to decide what is more useful. A flat 20% buff or four times damage only on sneak attacks. Alright, I'm going to take moving target first because there's a lot of situations where I get in trouble and I need to get away and that extra damage resistance while I'm running away is probably going to save me a lot. And then for the second one, I think ninja is going to be the wiser option because it does affect sneak attack damage with guns as well. So I may get more use out of that at the moment. And then I can add the 20% damage buff on melee later. And now I'm pretty stoked to see what I can do with this katana. Okay, there's just one single upgrade for this, which slightly increases the damage. And then there's some color options for the handle. But I now know that this is part of a mod pack that I have that adds in some classic weapons from Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas. I actually didn't know that when I picked it up. Uh, so it looks like we don't have a lot of options here, but I'm going to use it for the time being. And I think I'll also upgrade this pipe wrench that I picked up to puncturing because that gives it the property of armor piercing, which could potentially be useful. And just in case, I've fashioned me a makeshift sniper rifle out of this bolt action pipe rifle and as far as armor goes by switching back to the military fatigues and then adding on this full loadout of leather yes i'm increasing damage resistance and energy resistance by quite a bit and i think my last order of business today before i sign off is going to be to build a completely ridiculous an unnecessary structure towering over my rocket here that I've become quite fond of so let me see how I can do in that regard
Okay, I think I'm done for now. I have a very basic structure set up. It's not furnished yet. I'm gonna keep working on it. I'll give you a tour of what I have starting off the next episode. And then I think I'll take the training wheels off and head out to the East Coast. We'll see how difficult it gets when we get away from this first area. So far, I'm loving this. I'm getting everything that I wanted out of it. I didn't necessarily say, hey, I would like to play Fallout 4 again. I was just craving a certain flavor of adventure. This has served me well so far. Uh, if you're still here, you're a trooper. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time.